Welcome to the second tutorial about scripting for Fusion. In our first tutorial I showed you how to create tools and connect them in Lua. This time I'll switch to Python and we'll write a full-blown tool script. I'd like to demonstrate how to rewrite the, ba the vague animation script that comes with Fusion. It's a really good example because I can explain the basics of Fusion's object-oriented model, the tool attributes and even how to pop up a dialog box to ask for user input. This won't be a one-by-one -one copy of the script though. The default bake animation script, as you can see here, will only bake one input at a time. Our script will accept multiple inputs to be baked. To follow along you'll need Fusion 6.1 or later. Since Fusion 6.2 you will need to install your own Python version. I have chosen 2.7.2. If everything is set up you'll have a Python button in the scripting console. Click it to switch to Python mode and let's get started. To create a new tool script from scratch, just right click on a selected tool and choose Script, Edit, New. The proper folder will be opened and you can name your script file. Skite will pop up with a blank document and you'll notice that the file extension was changed to IonScript. To fix this, just go to Save As and save the script with the proper Py extension. The Iron script document hasn't been written to disk anyway. So, a tool script is able to rely on a variable called tool which contains a reference to the currently selected tool. To test some commands in the scripting console it's necessary to define this variable as well. Type tool equals comp.activetool capital A capital T into the console and if you print the variable you'll see that it contains a reference to the transform we have selected. So let's get started with the script. What do we have to do? We need to get all animated inputs from the current tool. An input in Fusion Lingo isn't just the image input triangle here. All the sliders and parameters of the tool are inputs as well. To get a list of them, we can query our currently selected tool, which we have stored in the tool variable. Since Fusion is highly object oriented, the tool has a function called getInputList, which will do what we need. Let's type inputList equals tool.getInputList and then print the result. As you can see, we have received a Python dictionary with lots of objects in it. These are handles to all the inputs. How do we know which one is which? Well, here's a small Python snippet that will print a better list. Each input has a property called name, which contains the label you can see above a slider or next to a checkbox. This is uh, the Python command which will concatenate the input names in a string and print it. As you can see, it works quite well, and that's the list of all the inputs of our transform object. Um, this one here, for example, is the center control. What can we do with it? So far you have seen two aspects of fusion objects, functions or methods, as well as property variables or member variables as they are called in the fusion scripting documentation. There's a third form of variable and it's called an attribute. To query the attributes of an object, use the getAttributes function. It's abbreviated like this. Let's pick one of our inputs and list its attributes. And we've got another dictionary here, with lots of attribute names and values. Imp as id and imp as name are important. They contain the scripting id and the user-friendly label of this input center in this example. Each name has a special naming convention. It contains the data type, for example s means it's a string or n it's a number, i and p means it's from an input. The data type tells us which kind of data is provided, points or numbers, 
or in other cases images or text. As you know from part one of the scripting tutorial, inputs are connected to outputs, not just between tools and flow, but also between input controls and their modifiers. You can get from an input to an output using the getConnectedOutput method, then print the attributes of that output. Well, that's the output that's connected to our center input, but you still haven't reached the modifier that provides that value. To do this, use the getTool method of an output. It will get you the tool that the output belongs to. Now you have reached the shake modifier that is connected to the center input of our transform tool. Let's put what we have learned into use. Our tool script will have to scan all inputs and check whether something is connected to it. But we don't want connected images or masks, so these will have to be excluded. If we have found a valid animated input, we'll store it in a second dictionary. You can print this dictionary and run the script. Because I've already prepared the complete script beforehand, I'll insert an exception here to quit the script. This, of course, is only a debugging statement. The nice thing is that there's no need to reload anything or restart Fusion. Just launch the tool script from the context menu whenever you have made changes. And you can see there's our dictionary of animated inputs. Now on to the next part. We want to display a dialog to the user which lists all animatable inputs. You have the power of PyQt at your disposal, but for now I'll just use a simple dialog function that is built into Fusion. It's a method of the composition object called AskUser. It allows us to show sliders, checkboxes or drop-down lists in Fusion's look and feel. The syntax seems a bit weird at first because of Fusion's Lua heritage. Let's break it down. For each widget you'd like to display, you need an ID, the kind of control, for example a checkbox, and a name attribute for a user-friendly label. If you put this into a Python dictionary, you're missing keys for the first two items. They will have to be assigned numeric keys. The third row is fine. Multiple widgets are nested into another dictionary, where they will receive numeric keys as well. This array then has to be passed to the AskUser function, which will return the state of each checkbox if the user didn't cancel the dialog. Let's give it a test run. I'll just insert the debugging exception. And here's the dialog pop-up. See how we have received a dictionary that contains the checkbox IDs, which we made the same as the inputs they refer to, as well as a number that indicates whether the checkbox was selected or not. The next task of our script here is to filter the list of inputs to only contain the ones that were selected. This is happening in this loop here. Next comes the main loop. We have to record the keyframes of each input into a temporary array. Then we'll create fresh animation curves that override the existing ones. And finally, we'll write back the keyframes one by one. At this point here, there's just a little distinction between animated point controls and everything else. You can bake points to either a polypath or an XY path. Busiest blinds will handle numbers amongst other things. This whole loop shouldn't be disturbed by user input and it should be undoable. The required calls are composition start undo to have Fusion remember the previous state of the comp and composition lock to lock the comp. Since an exception inside the main loop would exit the script and leave the comp in a locked state, we have to enclose everything in a try finally block, which makes sure the comp is unlocked on the way out. At the end, the undo event will be closed. Without this line, the undo event will be discarded by Fusion and won't show up in the menu. To get the composition's frame range, query its attributes. This works similar to how we access the, the input attributes earlier. Every script, and also the console, has access to variables called comp and composition. They both mean the same thing.
Let me just reuse this Python loop to print a nice list of attributes that's more readable. comp and global start and comp and global end contain the first and last frame of a fusion composition. The last bit I need to explain is how to read and set keyframes. For example here this two-dimensional array of the tool variable. You can access a known input quickly by treating tool as a dictionary and using the input ID as the key. That's much quicker than going through get input list. You can use this syntax to set the value of an input. For example, the flip horizontally checkbox. If you hover your mouse over the checkbox, the input's uh, scripting ID is printed in the status bar. And of course, querying an input is just as easy. You just need to specify the desired frame number in a second set of square brackets. Alright, run the finished script now. As you can see, the curve has been baked. You can get this script on VFXpedia along with a slightly improved version which is a little more verbose and also allows you to define a custom frame range that gets baked. Thanks for watching.